evening, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday, February 21st, 2018, meeting of the Weatherfield Planning and Zoning Commission. I'll quickly do the roll call. I'm here. Uh, Jim Hughes. Here. To uh, Tony Margiata is not here. Rich Roberts is not here. George Oikel. Here. Joe Hammer is not here. Tony Homicki. Here. Tom Dean. Here. Ryan Allard. Here. Dave Edwards. Here. Yolanda. Here. And Dan Silver. Here. So I think that gives nine. So uh, that's the maximum. So everybody's participating. Let's move on to uh, public hearing number one. Uh, it is application 1969-17-Z. Stephen Lameza, Lameza of MGC Developers seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.6 accessory buildings. Would the applicant join us up here? Uh, this is for the installation of safety barrier poles and nets at 76 Country Club Road, <coughs> Weathersfield Country Club. So, the way this works, if you would introduce yourself and then start by um, offering a description of what's going on and what the application is for. Good evening, everybody. I'm Steve LaMesa, MGC Developers. We're out of East Hartford, Connecticut. Um, our company designs and builds golf centers, driving ranges. Um, and I'm here at the request of Weathersfield Country Club to answer any questions regarding the structure, the extension that they're doing for their driving range and the nets. Um, the poles are 40 feet out of the ground and they're 50 foot on center. And there's approximately five poles and 400 feet of net. And the purpose was to, I believe, to extend their existing range facility to protect balls from going into uh, properties surrounding the driving range. All right, thank you. Um, so it's been years since I've been there, right? So it's on the east side of the property and you're extending it toward the north. Is uh, if, if I could, uh, I'm uh, Art Hudon. I'm on the board at Weathersfield, so I could help, help them out here. It is on the east side, and there's. Uh, it, it looks like it's going to be about 200 feet. Uh, so it's four poles. So we have the netting going along, really three quarters right now, and this is extending uh, just that east section by uh, those five poles and four sections. Okay. <coughs> Up toward, and I've, I've got a perception of standing, uh, you know, on the on the <coughs> tee boxes or on the you know the driving range, and you're moving it toward the parking lot behind the yes, uh, heading towards Griswold that that section. And yeah. it's it's already around the whole. It's all, already uh, around uh, the other the other sides, uh, and and has been for for decades that I'm aware of. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. George. The netting in good shape, and all the uh, other areas. <laughs> The, the netting is, I know that I, we saw a recent letter from the neighbor and uh, we are willing to, to correct any holes in any netting. We, we're always in the process of replacing the netting and I think we have some more areas that we're trying to uh, uh, replace in the upper right hand corner if you'll pardon the lack of the direction. Uh, this would be the lower left hand corner. Uh, yeah, but but lower if- Lower left and right side below the area you're proposing, right? The, 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 Areas which we've worked on in the recently is in the far right. This is would be in the, the left if you're standing on the range. But but the netting right now up there, if there's any issues with any holes in netting, uh, we'll gladly uh, uh, correct that. Yeah, just, um, we were going to hear you a month or two ago, but anyway. I was over there that long ago, and I know that uh, Alan Corker put a lot of the culvert back on the east side, lower. Yes. 30 years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the point is that the, the netting is up there and uh, the poles appear to be. And then I don't know, we're going to talk, I guess, about concern about some people with uh, the growth. And the, <coughs> it's your growth and uh, they wanted to remove because everything from poison ivy to dead trees. Well, 
well, that's a whole, you know, the, 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 one of the concerns here, and we can appreciate our neighbor's concern about, about this change, but one of our concerns is, is we have a lot of different neighbors, and in other areas, when the arborvitaes died, even though we also had the netting, some balls are getting through, so now we have to go out in the spring on the other side of the range and plant some more arborvitaes, and our fear here was there's a nice stand of arborvitaes, but if there's a storm or if those goes down, you know, then, then we're in a real, a real pickle. So, you know, we have some neighbors that would like us to add height to the netting. Now, you know, we understandably have some neighbors who say they don't want the netting, but the primary concern, you know, we believe is the safety of, um, you know, anyone who's visiting, even not just the neighbors, but if somebody's visiting and they get hit with a golf ball, you know, as, as you know, you know, the idea that, well, for aesthetics, we, we acquiesce to our neighbor's request. You know, in the law, they'd say, you know, we had noticed that that this could be a hazard, we should have taken precautions, and we are now responsible for the for the results of that. So, you know, it's really just a safety issue. And it's just <coughs> one area. It, yeah, I mean, the whole rest of the range whole has area. the netting. So this is adding five poles, 200 feet of section. Um, you know, and I know I, I can I can appreciate the concerns of the neighbor, but also they have tall arborvitaes, so they're seeing that extra 20 feet above the arborvitaes where there's some additional netting and, and the tops of the poles there. Um, but it is a driving range and, and, and it's, it's in an area that um, is, is concerning that, you know, we, sh we should have had these things up when we put in the original uh, driving range at the time. Yeah, in other words, <coughs> this is the new section. This is the new section, and yes. going to repair some of the old Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes. Just to respond well, to you're not going to say, we're just going to do that five to ten years from now. You're going to try to get out of it. Absolutely. Reasonable. Absolutely. The, the, new net is, the new net is on site already. It oh, just oh, needs to be installed. We're waiting yeah. for the conditions to be. <laughs> not just for this site. I mean, but you mean for other. For that missing section, the net. Yes. The net is yeah. there on okay. site. Okay. Jim? Maybe Mr. Judon, maybe you can uh, jog my memory. Early on, years ago, probably 20, 30 years ago, there was a steel chain link fence there at one time, right? There, there may yeah. have been, but I, and I've been there 25 years, and, yeah. and to my recollection, in my 25 years, it's been the netting. But even before that, there may have been uh, some chain link. But in the last 25 years, to the best of my recollection, it's been the netting. And just historically, I'm trying to remember because my memory is iffy. <laughs> The range was in that configuration like it is today prior to Stock Mill and any of those houses ever even being there, correct? I, I, I believe so. After? Yes, I believe so. Under Bob Schappa's era. And oh, yeah. Going back oh, yes. Forever. Yes. It's, it's been in that location since I can remember going back into the 70s uh, when I was, you know, uh, smaller. And that cul-de-sac spur was the last spur that was actually put in that neighborhood, right? I think that so. the last piece. Yes. You don't look 90 years old, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't look yeah, that old. Well, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's what I thought. I thought there was an anchor, a much more intrusive chain link type that's fence with four meter poles on and everything at one point in time. Yeah, and there's been a lot of arborvitae growth around everywhere, but now we've lost one section of arborvitae, so we're working with that other neighbor to, to, to remedy that situation. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Have you actually had uh, any? I don't know, safety events, any issues where somebody got hurt or anything? No one who's gotten hurt, but we've had issues along 18. We've had issues with the house that we're going to work to remedy. I think at, even at this location before the current residence, we've replaced windows. We, you know, we try to be, we don't try to drag it out. If someone says they've, they've injured their siding because of a loose ball that comes through, we fix, you know, we, we reimburse them for the siding. We fix the window. Uh, you know, we're trying to work with putting arborvitaes in for, for the house in the other right-hand corner because they, those came down in a storm or for some type of uh, disease. But we definitely have had incidents where people have complained to us about encroachment by golf balls, which, you know, which happens. Right, thank you. Uh, you alluded to the fact that uh, the record has a piece of correspondence from uh, Michael Strong, who, um, <coughs> oh, he lives at Grist Mill. Uh, and that he was asking for the fabric to be repaired and to clean up the, the growth that's uh, between the fence and his property line. Uh, there is a, <clears throat> but otherwise he doesn't uh, 
have any other concerns. I guess the, the department received uh, yesterday a letter from the Congdens from uh, Farmstead Road, 76 Farmstead. And I'll, I'll try and paraphrase because it's a page and a half. I'll pick out parts of it. Um, the, the family vehemently opposes the application presented at this time and we strongly urge all the board members to vote no. Uh, I would like to have the following on the record and hope seriously uh, that we would consider <coughs> um, <coughs> their information before we make the request. Uh, let's see, the country club is truly beautiful, class A residential. They apparently recently went through a process of getting their a new shed approved and had to go through some hurdles getting a, a survey, et cetera. So they're concerned that there isn't much to this application. I think that paraphrases it sufficiently. Um, it's a, the country club's a valuable asset. Uh, do, 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 do. The other issue that they need to speak about is it's is that the country club has not provided any documentation as to why now after so many years they feel that a fence is necessary. <coughs> they submitted one line saying it is to protect the neighbors from the occasional wild or stray ball. They go on to describe how there's, um, this will affect wildlife. And finally, they're both uh, Connecticut licensed real estate appraisers and uh, I guess they don't suggest that uh, it, it does anything to their values. I'm not why, sure why they bring it up. But anyways, I think that pretty much summarizes it. So we have, uh, you know, I don't know if you have any, can offer any response to that. This is at Farmstead. <coughs> is that actually along the area that you're protecting? Yeah, it's, 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 yes, that's, it's, I think you'll, you could probably see their house and I think they're here to point out where that would be in the picture provided there um, right behind that section uh, of the poles. <coughs> You know, I think my only response is I believe, according to their letter, they purchased in 2016. And, you know, why now is it, it's really over the last few years that we have noticed more and more responses from our neighbors. You know, I think in the old days, there probably wasn't as much of an issue with stray balls. But now we've put in some other, you know, we, we're always getting questions on 18. We're getting questions on other sections of the range. Uh, we had an opportunity to, to extend the range. It, you know, cost quite a bit of money to, to, to do it. And we just figured that it, the time was right uh, to, to add to that because if they sell their house, the issue becomes if the next people aren't willing to, to live uh, with that encroachment by the golf balls, then you have to go back out and hire an engineer and, and put in the structures and spend thousands of dollars to, to put in the netting and then that house gets sold and the people want the netting down. So it really is something for just consistency with the entire range, safety for all of our neighbors and for their guests, really, is, is, was, our, was our motivation. I'm sure there's a detail in here somewhere, but how far in from the property line are you putting this fence? Do you have that, Steve, anywhere? <coughs> I don't. I don't have that uh, in this document. 20 feet? About 20 feet. About so. 20 feet. Other questions? Yes. Tom. Pardon me. Go ahead, Tom. Um, this is more a question for Peter. Uh, in the uh, cover letter that the Country Club has uh, uh, has issued, uh, it's undated, but I presume it went in with their application. Um, it's addressed to you. Uh, the, uh, uh, the middle paragraph, the second paragraph in it, the final sentence says, the netting is consistent with the netting already protecting all other areas of the range from errant shots, quote, end quote. Um, on the, the uh, little map that they provided uh, with the application, there's uh, nothing to indicate where that other netting is located. So my questions really center uh, on that particular issue. Uh, the, the netting that is proposed, or apparently already the poles are already installed, um, how does that compare to the netting that is already there and on what basis is that prior netting there? All of those are good questions. I think I'm going to let the applicant re uh, respond to some of those. I have um, no record of the previous 
netting going through the, the review process. So I think just over time those went up. Um, this came out of an enforcement action because the construction was underway and we received a call from the neighbors, I think, if I recall correctly, or Justin, the former zoning officer did. So you'll see a letter in the file regarding an enforcement action and which necessitated the, um, you know, the permit that you see tonight. We have no specific language in the regulations that addresses this, so we lumped it in as an, you know, the other accessory uses permitted by special permit. Um, so I, I think I've been here 13 years, and you know, so they predate the the previous fencing predates me, I think, um, by a significant amount of time. I'll, I'll let the the applicants respond to the location of the other um, the other fencing. Yeah, you can't really see it um, on these uh, aerials, but if you look at our GIS system, you can see, you know, the location of those, so. Okay, as the applicant would, uh, would strive to answer that, I would also appreciate knowing the age or the date in which the prior netting was installed. And, and that's why I think uh, uh, when the other uh, member asked me the question, uh, I've been a member since 92, and I'm positive that the same structure with the same type of netting has been there since 92, and I also, going on my memory, would, would venture to say back to the 70s. Uh, other than replacing the same type of netting as we're going to do again in a different section, and all relatively the same height. And if I if I can approach just to show you, if you were to look at the um, at this picture where they're showing the existing pole, the ne the existing netting runs all the way from this corner all the way up over. There's a small area of, of this tree over here that doesn't have netting, uh, you know, because it's also a couple hundred yards away. And new section where the orange circles are and running along there, but the existing netting with the same height of poles and the same height of netting is running all the way, uh, which would be, I would imagine, you know, 1,500 feet. I don't, I don't know how many feet that would be. If this is a 200-foot section, I'd imagine well over 1,000 feet of netting of similar material and similar size. And that's, that, that distance kind of corresponds to my, my sort of assessment yeah. <coughs> of it as well. However, um, so we're, we're talking, you know, really around 1,700 feet of netting and it would seem uh, like the, the, the previously installed netting might be subject to some enforcement action, you know, unless the <coughs> doctrine of latches would attach or some other uh, legal doctrine would prevent mm -hmm. any, any enforcement uh, if this is considered uh, you know, if the earlier uh, netting is is essentially the same as uh, this this proposed netting, mm -hmm. uh, and it almost seems like it, w you know, it. Uh, quick question: um, Is this netting uh, intended to remain uh, all year round, or is it just uh, particular? times of the year. I think it has to be all year round just because of the economics, it's a pulley system and the cost of of taking down all of the netting uh, and then putting it back up would be thousands of thousands of dollars, uh, which, you know, unfortunately uh, we can't afford right now, but uh, it's, it, we've never taken down sections uh, in the past. And, uh, you know, fortunately the other neighbors have looked at it as an asset, even though it's in their backyard and in fact are usually asking us to, to make patches and repairs and make sure that um, it's tied down to the ground <coughs> properly so loose balls aren't getting under and things like that. Um, it seems though that, then that this is uh, essentially a, 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 you know, even though the, the materials are not you know, m uh, metallic in nature, that it amounts to a, you know, a 40 foot high fence almost around the entire golf golf range, golf, the, the, around the whole course. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's considered to be a fence that is a permanent establishment, how does that comport to our, our, our regulations? As I said earlier, we really don't have uh, uh, language in our regulations that would address something like this. We do not, uh, in residential zones, um, regulate fences, no permits required to put up a fence unless you're in the historic district. I did uh, confer with the building official at the time this enforcement action 
uh, was initiated, uh, they don't consider this offense, um, uh, and they don't regulate it by their code either. Okay. So I, I think you would be bound by that interpretation. Yeah. So that's uh, they did provide. If you looked in your packet, some engineer drawings on the pole installation, you know, for, for the structural aspects of that. Um, so there is some documentation, if that's your concern. So there is some information to that effect in, in the record anyway. Thank you. Other questions? If not, this is a public hearing. So is there any, if you'll bear with me just a moment, is there anybody in the audience who wishes to comment on this particular application? Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. Come on up. Uh, join us at the microphone, and if you gentlemen would l yield. My name is Anthony Ragazzi. I live at 47 Garden Hill Road. And uh, I've been living there for, for a little more than 23 years. Um, when we first moved in, we saw the golf course, we saw the driving range, and we wondered, you know, geez, our house going to get bombarded? And... Um, over the years, I have to admit that I've picked up a lot of uh, golf balls and threw them back over there. When we moved in, they had the Abravides up there, but they were about 10 feet tall. Now they're about 30. And uh, in fact, uh, I have three sons, and one of the things that I did to, when I was teaching them how to throw a ball was to pick up the golf balls, and then we would walk through the Abravides over to the sand pit, and I would have them, this is when they were like four, and I would have them throwing the balls into the sand pit. Um, we had, I had two broken windows, but the windows uh, were part of the storm door that's on the farthest end of the house in 23 years. And the two golf balls that hit the windows, and, and as the gentleman said, they just said, okay, go get it fixed and give us a check, and they took care of it beautifully. Um, but then after, at that point, they were hitting the balls off the tees, and they were hitting them directly, like my house is due east, let's keep that in mind. My house is due east of when we moved in, they were blasting from the uh, driving range. And they would hit them that way. And that's the reason why there were so many golf balls in my backyard. And uh, so my kids got pretty good at throwing. And uh, <clears throat> after that, they changed the driving range. They changed it so the balls weren't coming off of some of the uh, off of some of the pads back there. I'm not a golfer, so I don't know what the language is. Um, some of the before this happened, they were coming due east. Now they're going south southeast. And I when I saw them putting up the poles last spring, I said, "What in the heck is going on?" we don't have a problem with this and it's going, I felt it started to look so ugly that it was going to cost me a lot of money when I went to sell the house because it was a beautiful view there. You know, off of our kitchen window, we have this great big picture window over there and it was just a beautiful view. Now you've got these big, heavy set poles with an ugly old netting going across. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, this property is not going to be as valuable when I go to sell it as it is when I bought it. And it's because of that, because I, I think it is, it really is an eyesore. And that's why I'm here tonight, because A, I don't see how the fencing is really uh, going to help us. Maybe a straw, sh uh, maybe a, what do you call it, uh, a bad shot or something like that. I know all golfers will... We'll, we'll do that at times. I'm willing to put up with that. But um, I think that because uh, only a few balls are, are going to be coming across, we don't get them like we did before, that's for sure. So uh, that's the reason why I, I oppose it. It's, it's a real eyesore. Yes, sir. Oh. Are oh, you talking uh, to me? What would you suggest other than what's proposed tonight? And you're not anywhere really near. Well, I have that netting going almost all the way across my backyard. Okay, but they're not, they're not dealing with that on this application. Oh, okay. You know, sir, I was a little bit late, and I didn't what get that. What would you rather have behind your house that's decorative? I would rather have nothing, because I think, because 
remember it was when they first got there, they were hitting the balls due east at my house. Then the, the golf course made an adjustment. Yes, now it's now south, south. With that, Beg your pardon? You're living with that direction of the golf course, correct? Yes. Uh, and so you mean you want them to change the driving? No, no. You go ahead and keep doing what you've been doing since uh, I don't know how far back they, they changed the direction that they had the guys teeing off on when they were warming up to go out on the course. <coughs> Okay, uh, back when I, 94, when I first moved in there, uh, they were coming to, they were coming at my house. Okay, and even then I didn't ob object to it. Okay, but now I live here, the golf course, the, the, there's a whole bunch of places where they can uh, uh, tee off. In 94, they were coming this way, all the way down the list, all, all the way down. Then something happened and, and um, they started going this way because they had more land that way. There was, there was a longer place to hit the ball. And I remember talking to some of the people at the time at the golf course and they said, well, you know, because the, uh, the golfers are getting better, golfers are getting stronger, um, equipment's getting a lot better, balls are going farther, the, 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 the clubs that they use are made of different materials now. And so they felt, and I can understand where the golf course is coming from, but when they made the adjustment to, to use the deepest part of the course in order to um, take care of the, the strength and, the, and the, the improvement in the equipment, I, I understood that. So I, that's why I was shocked when I woke up one morning, I heard this, <laughs> these motors going, and I mean, I'm always hearing that anyway, at six o'clock in the morning in the spring and summer, and I understand that, that's not a problem. But uh, when I saw that pole going up, I knew immediately at the first pole, I said, oh no, they're gonna be putting up a, 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 a net. And sure as anything, that's what we got. So I'm struggling to find out exactly, or to, to figure out exactly where you're living. What, what did you say your address was? I live at 47 Garden Hill Road. Garden Hill, okay, okay. versus Farmstead. Garden Hill is off of, yeah. Versus Farmstead, which is, it's the same street. It's it just the goes same around the street, as a matter of fact, that 76 farmstead is my neighbor. That's that's what I was going to get at. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is is this net effectively uh, protecting both yours and the the Congdon's property? Is yes. that all it's really protecting? And yes. it's only 200 feet long, right? right? So two of us are affected and maybe even more. I don't know. Okay. All right, thank you. Is that it? Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. We got golf balls for us. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I live in Ben County. I live in 76. My wife was supposed to be here, but she had to leave, so I still got her business. I suppose I should have asked if you were in the audience before I bothered to summarize the letter. Okay, my name is Benjamin Congdon, as I stated. My wife and I purchased 76 Farmstead Road. A little background, so it'll help you why we give you the data. Uh, Marge has been a real estate appraiser since the 80s, residential. I was a commercial, residential, and industrial appraiser. I provide a testimony in federal court, Connecticut Superior Court, District Courts, Criminal Court, Housing Court, and various assessors, boards of appeal throughout the state. Uh, the overview is why um, by the way, I feel country club application must be denied. If you saw Marjorie's letter, she stated very reasons in there. I'd like to review the photos we provided with you to uh, offset the information provided by the country club with their, their uh, documentation. I want to um, 
review and discuss the pertinent zoning regulations since this is an A residence district. <coughs> um, use the area map and the diagram in there that we'll go over. Um, and, and also assess the potential impact on whether it's for the tax revenues because of this. Uh, we believe the application must be denied for several reasons. Technical reasons is the application doesn't conform with the regulations required by the town for a satisfactory submission of an application. <coughs> the town planning and zoning didn't apply the administrative uh, requirements and rules correctly to the application so that it should be rejected. Uh, evidence is provided by our photos for some additional data. Um, if you look at page five. There are two photos there. Uh, the white is Marjorie, my wife, standing next to it. This is five and a half feet tall. If you go to the zoning regulations, you see that the limit on the zoning page 47 is 18 feet. That is, zoning in the, in, in the A residential area, height limit is 18 feet except for specific, very specific exceptions. This structure is not one of the exceptions. The height of the structure has to be limited to 18 feet. 3.6.3 uh, is in an A1 zone, what they're asking for. Um, <clears throat> the inch of the fence uh, is not as represented by the engineer's photographs. If you look at our pages 3, 7, 9, 10, 11, what 12. What's that section that you referred to about the height? What section? Yes, uh, accessory use building structures, section uh, A, I and item three. My item, maximum height of an accessory building or structure shall not exceed 18 feet on page 47 in the zoning regulations. <coughs> You're going uh, fast, so. Uh, that's okay, I got it in, I, I put it in the, in the report slow also. Slow down a little bit. No problem. Yes, I believe it is. Faster than me. Yes, 23, item 3. Now, if you go back to page 3, the photograph, comparable height, Margie's five feet, six inches tall. The 18 foot would be if you added a little more than uh, two more of her on top of it. See how far below the hedge, the arborvitae hedge we are? Well, arborvitae. Just, you're going fast, so. Okay, uh, no problem. I'm trying to read what you're talking <laughs> about. Okay, no rush. Okay. Um, if you look at page three in my submission, there's two photographs there. The one on the left shows Marjorie standing at the corner of our property line where there's a surveyor's <coughs> pin that was required when we applied for our uh, various applications and zoning. <coughs> um, three times Marjorie's height would be the limit of any structure in the A residence zone. The Arbavati towers over that at altitude already and provides a, a substantial buffer for the golf ball issue. You can see how high the fence, the fence will they're not calling a fence, but it's a fence by any other name. It towers over the top of that. It clearly is in violation of the zoning regulation for height and is not a, an authorized exception variance for that zone. Okay? What's the practical nature, sir, of your property versus the country club? I stood on your property. Okay, yes. So I'm very familiar, I'm relatively familiar with it. Okay. Although I don't know about the other side, the country club side. I okay, the other that side that. is where the... Well, let me put it this way. You have a lot of growth in your yard. Mm. Uh, I assume to kind of protect your, what you see and the golf balls. How many golf balls hit your house or bother you? Without, but even without the net? Uh, yeah, without the net. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll ask not, that. 
No, I, I don't know. The net doesn't cover all our property yet if they're going to expand it, but you seem to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's infrequent. Um, I haven't had, I think there was one window broken before we moved in that was repaired, but I haven't had any problems with broken windows, dented siding, or things like that. Um, we're more concerned with the impact of a pretty ugly fence. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's seriously ugly. And the concern is by approving this section of fence, you're retroactively approving all the fence that is violating the zoning regulations of the town radically all the way around that's put up, even though it's so put up. So we should turn it down on the basis that the rest of the fencing is dilapidated? <coughs> no, I didn't say and dilapidated. You got this fencing. No, it, but it's... Well, that's what you just said to me. The rest of the fencing is put up without permit. Well, you know, when one of the discussions was that nobody knows exactly when the fences were put up and uh, under what zoning regulations were in existence at the time that the, the, the fencing was put up. It very well could be a non-conforming use uh, unless we have some evidence that the fences were put up and a certain regulation was in force which made it illegal. See, that's my problem. Uh, I understand your problem. I also understand that it's a pre-existing- to my issue okay. a little bit more. Sure. Uh, I'm stood in your backyard. I don't know how golf balls can get through. And if they do get through, your house sits up about 20 feet, even the back end of it, from the land. And uh, you I, know, have a I don't know how problem. golf ball will get at your house. I have a ruling for You problems. are unique almost over in there. Yes, and, and I thought the land, at least the land, the wooded land that you saw, I thought and was represented as being mine <coughs> when I purchased the house. However, since I had to, I, I'm planning on expanding my garage and the shed, I had to go through surveys mandated by your zoning requirements for the garage and the shed and comply, which they did not. So that's just one point of Let's contention. What was the last one you just hmm? made? What was the last point you just made? At the end they didn't the have to. They didn't comply. It's not. It's a non-regulatory. It's a regulatory issue. Not open to you, but when we go to Superior Court, it will be a material issue. Who didn't comply? Well, of course. <laughs> okay. Um, if you look at Section 8, the special permits, which is page 109 through 110 in your zoning regulations, which I also included as an addendum, um, has a negative impact on the area, hasn't been addressed, and it has applicable structure and landscaping Who support. What's the negative impact on the area? Market value and appearance. You've had, you've had that by real estate, and you're, you're in the real estate business. Right? You've already been having the impact, but people haven't realized why the impact's been there. It's over on the other side streets where the netting is there already, and uh, it's reflected in lengthening sales time, deeper discounts off of the listing asking prices, and it's measurable. And it's there. I haven't bothered Are you to me. concerned about the other people rather than yourself? I'm concerned about both. Because as we get through my presentation here, you're going to see allowing the fence and continuing to allow the fence is uh, undermining the property values in the neighborhood. You know, let me put a, a point that my colleague was trying to make here. Okay. And I think he's doing all right. Yeah. But the point is, I'll add <laughs> apparently the old fencing was grandfathered, perhaps, is what he was saying. We don't know, that, that's we can assume it. That's the term we, we can assume. Okay. And so you can't challenge it only by, I don't know, how the heck you would challenge it. Well, let's step back another way. The, the country club is grandfathered as a golf course. The golf course didn't grandfather the driving range. But we're talking about the poles. And the driving range, okay, but let's talk about the poles. We're talking about the poles, yep. and there is no evidence that the poles that are on the property now are not legally there, perhaps as a non-conforming use, but that are, are legally present on the property. Unless somebody can present some evidence to this board at the <laughs> date that the poles were built and what regulations were in effect at the time the poles were built. It's going to be an interesting yeah. project, isn't it? Well, and, and, oh, more, and, and, and more to the point, it's not before us tonight. So let's, let's move beyond that issue. What we are looking at is a request to build some two or 300 feet of new pole <coughs> um, extending the current, the current situation. And uh, 
you know, there are zoning regs in place now, so let's talk about those, shall we? Okay, if we're gonna address so only the new poles. Please. Okay. Thank you, I, it's my meeting. So, so you still have the microphone, but I would like you to continue to go. Sorry, I have my hearing aids, I don't hear, okay. Um, from the photographs I've showed you on file, the, the country club has not been maintaining either the new fence or, or the old fence. If you look at the new fence, the photographs he submitted show a seamless area of netting between poles. And if you look at the fence photographs of the area where the new fence is, it's all spliced together, has holes, holes on the bottom, holes on the side, holes on the top, and is not anywhere near the visual appearance that was represented in the application. Um, there's no mention or, or way to deal with the wildlife since you're putting up so much high fence. Um, the area between the fence and the property line, which would be the back area of the fence, is not maintained by the country club. The grass gets grown, it's, it's a, um, it's a wild area for rodents, insect infestations, and field mice and other things. I didn't know it till I moved in, but I got a note from the seller saying, there's a mice problem coming in from area out there. I didn't know where it's from, but it appears to be from all the unmaintained <coughs> areas around the buffer of the country club. If you look at the new fence only, the height issue is, has not been addressed and has not been resolved if it's in an A zone, if it's an A1 zone. Um, it's because it's a structure. Um, if you look at the maintenance issues for it, they haven't been maintaining it and the photographs there show the lack of maintenance. Oh, hold it, so you're saying that this new fence won't be maintained because the old fence has problems? The old fence has problems, hasn't been maintained and the grounds around the fence the fence wasn't designed for good maintenance procedures because efficient maintenance procedures because of the wiring configuration. The engineering, the way the support cables were installed. The engineer shows one design on support cables, but if you look at the way the cables were put in, they're not the same or they're missing. Again, the chairman wants to dwell on this. Okay. Behind the other point that I wanted to make about the, the fence is no alternatives were investigated that we can f find meaningful alternatives because of the size of the driving range area and the technology shift. The drive, the, the country club is in an A1 zone. It's not a commercial zone. It is strictly an A1 zone. Anytime commercial construction is done in an A1 zone, it has to get a permit and it needs to get a variance. When they rebuilt the driving range, I never found a permit or a variance on file. When they, when they uh, managed the uh, insurance city open, the record of paperwork was excellent. But when you look at the driving range, it's not there. Whereas it's not grandfathered, all the commercial work that was done needed to be done under permit and under variance because it's in an A1 zone. It's commercial work. Example, if I put a uh, T in my backyard for my personal pre preference. I, th I, think we, I think we understand. We're not here <coughs> concerning the legality of the driving range. We're here on the netting. So okay. I really don't want to get into an area. We're getting away from the nature of this application. Okay. Um, I believe that instead of the netting alternative development of um, alternative methods of managing the driving range can be developed. Would you do me a favor? Would you try yours? Is your If I turn the mic on yeah. and off, go ahead. You, you keep going. We're going to turn the mic off. Okay. Um, we believe we can fix the problem if we work together. It's not a matter of just. Because if the fence posts are approved, we are definitely going to appeal it. If, if we appeal it, not only are we going to appeal the existing ones, but we're going to do the research to appeal.
every research we did, we found other courses where they limited the style, I guess the, the, the clubs that are used in the driving maze to, to lower the flight distances. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's got to be a gentleman is speaking to the height of the poles and referring to the, uh, section 3.6 that the building, the accessory building or structure should not
Application number 1974-18Z, Alan Hoffman, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.6. I guess we're not gonna be. It's George. And, and he was saying it's you. I'll chop it off. <laughs> chop it off. All right. It's, it's not your turn, is it? 